Sean Russell, Top Spot USA, TSUSA Radio. Today we have Matt Toka as our guest. He's on Warner Brothers and he has green hair, but more importantly, he has an interesting story. When you have green hair and punk clothing, you're bound to get some looks from music fans. Warner Brothers recording artist Matt Toka doesn't seem to mind the criticism. I don't like having rules, like, and that, it comes back to me like the image, like, people can see what I look like and expect one thing and be disappointed, but at the same time, it's like, I don't, I'm not claiming I'm punk, I'm not claiming I'm fucking a hip-hop artist or some fucking jazz gospel prodigy, like, you know, like, all I'm doing is, is my music is matched up, it's me, and it's like, it's my expression, and it's, it's all about, like, to me, like, each song is its own, is its own thing, and I'm not trying to be stuck into a genre or... I, th- I think there's a consistency throughout my album, but at the same time, like, maybe it's my ADD, like, I get bored really, really easily, so, like, I have to still kind of venture out and see, uh, you know, how far I can take things or just, again, like, not really have any limits and just see where shit goes. And, and um, the songs that feel right, you know, they make the rest, and the songs that don't, they don't. Matt Toka opens up and reveals the true source of inspiration for his music. It's just like, I'm just singing about my life. It's, it's autobiographical. Uh, you know, mixed with this, you know, the devil shit. Like, I'm not a Satanist. I just think the world's going straight to hell. I think uh, the process of finding myself and and uh, especially just having to deal with all the family bullshit, it was a living hell. It felt like I was already dead and living in fucking hell. And, like, uh, you know, that's where a lot of my inspiration comes for this album and the songs that are on it. Back in 2004, Matt Toka was the lead singer in the band Cherry Monroe. They broke into the Billboard 100 with their single, Satellites. Looking back at his time in Cherry Monroe, Matoka realized that when he was younger, his music was missing a certain something. Well, I mean, when I did that album, I was about 18. And so it was like, I really didn't have much to say. And the thing I think I wanted to say, especially about like my family and personal shit, is that I didn't, I wasn't comfortable enough to go there. So, I mean, all of it was just like cheapy, tongue-in-cheek, fucking songs about girls. You know, it was like in my head, you know, myself and the band at the time, we genuinely thought that we were in Guns N' Roses, but we were seriously like some fucking clip five, you know, boys like girls kind of fucking kitty group. After two years, Matt Toka's good fortune took a turn for the worse. Yeah, you know, it was really, um, well, as soon as I got signed, I was like 19, out of young son of Ohio, and it was like, I thought people were going to just hand me like bags of money and, and uh, you know, get on MTV right away. Like, completely delusional. I had no idea what the reality of music business. And, um, you know, we got dropped after like two years. I was partying like crazy. And, you know, as soon as I got dropped, I was like, well, fuck it, I don't want to, in Youngstown, there's not much growth for me as, a, as an artist, as a person, and so I moved back to Los Angeles. While in Los Angeles, Matt Toka had to start from scratch. It was during this process that he started to tap into areas of his life that he never shared with the world. Uh, like right when I moved out, my mother and my grandfather went away uh, to prison, and you know I was fucked up, dude. It was hard to even get out of bed for like weeks at a time. It was really depressing. I was playing like street corners after playing in front of you know uh, hundreds of kids every night. Sometimes that kid's like a thousand or two. So a lot of the shit is I was trying to experiment with songwriting. It was a lot more heavy. I was, as I was depressed. And we reached the point after like three years, we just like, I just like, fuck this, dude. I don't want to be depressed anymore. I don't want to have to write heavy music. Like, it's just too much. I just want to get back to having fun. And, and um, the Trend and Road stuff is always like simplistic pop punk kind of shit. Uh, you know, so with this album, it was, I think, taking that simplicity and, and, uh, putting in, uh, you know, the growth that I've experienced over the, the past couple of years into, you know, these newer songs. After networking, playing music, and posting videos on YouTube, Matt Toka finally found his big break. Uh, I made a YouTube video with Ashton Roth out of college, and that's how I got a record deal. Uh, it was originally with Atlantic, but when Rock and Roll did my album, he pulled me actually into the Warner Brothers system after we finished it. With the past far behind him, Matt Toka is ready to conquer the future. He shares his plans for 2012. Uh, well, we've got an EP coming out. It's going to have, uh, like, Get Money 666, Say 10, Ode to My Family. There's an acoustic song called Courtney that's coming out, and 
Um, I think we do a couple more uh, acoustic versions of my stuff as well. So we're shooting for like seven songs on the EP, and then uh, later in the year, straight to hell, my full length album. To hear the longer version of this interview, make sure you go to topspotusa.com or pick up our TSUSA radio iPhone or Android app. To get more Matt Toka, make sure you go to matttoka.com.